This is the story of Gremlins. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. When Rand Pelser entered the musty Backstreet Curio Shop in Chinatown, he was hoping to find something different. But the tiny singing creature he discovered in a dark corner was more than different. It was special. It was a mogwai. Rand was enchanted. I've never seen anything like it. How much is he? The old shop owner shook his head. I cannot sell him at any price. Mogwai is very special creature. Needs much responsibility. Disappointed, Rand left the shop. Suddenly, the old man's grandson appeared with a wooden cage. Here, Mister, you can buy the Mogwai. Great, my son will love it. But what about your grandfather? Never mind. We need the money. Just remember this. Keep the Mogwai away from light, especially sunlight. It'll kill him. Don't get him wet, and never feed him after midnight. Never. Back in Kingston Falls, Rand proudly presented the unique Christmas gift to his son Billy. Amazed, Billy watched the fairy little creature peer out of the box with his large, friendly eyes. Rand beamed. They call him a Mogwai. He's really clever. He can figure out how to work almost any kind of gizmo. <laughs> Billy grinned as the creature climbed onto his shoulder and licked his cheek. <laughs> That's a great name. Let's call him Gizmo. After learning the rules about the Mogwai, Billy carried Gizmo upstairs to his room. I hope you like it up here, Giz. The Mogwai smiled and sang a single clear note. Billy played the same note on his electronic keyboard. Gizmo's large ears perked up, and he reached over to play the keys himself. Billy chuckled and <laughs> gently placed a big red Santa hat on the tiny Mogwai's head. You're some Christmas present, Gizmo. A few days later, Billy's young friend Pete came by. Wow! So this is a Mogwai, huh? Can I pet him? But Pete accidentally knocked over a paintbrush glass, splashing some drops of water on the Mogwai. Gizmo screamed and arched in pain. Billy watched helplessly. Oh no! He's not supposed to get wet. Look at his back. Spots were growing where the droplets had hit Gizmo. Then, as if by magic, the spots became five tiny balls of fur and popped off onto the table. Instantly, they grew into five brand new Mogwai creatures. Gizmo frowned at the giggling newcomers. Billy comforted his frightened pet. Poor Gizmo! No wonder you're not supposed to get wet. That must be how you multiply. Billy scratched his head. These new guys all look alike, except this one with the striped white hair. I guess we ought to call you Stripe. Hey, Giz, now you've got five playmates. But Gizmo shied away from the others. Billy turned away for a moment, and Stripe spit a grape seed at the startled family dog. Hey, quiet, Barney! If you can't get along with these harmless little guys, just stay outside. Stripe snickered to himself. <laughs> Late one night, as Billy was drawing at his desk, the five Mogwai whined loudly for food. You guys already had dinner. Oh well, it's still before midnight. I guess a snack won't hurt. Billy brought them some leftover chicken, and all of them devoured it quickly. All of them, that is, except a worried Gizmo. The next morning, Billy called his mother, Lynn, upstairs. I left the five Mogwai on the floor last night, Mom. But when I woke up, these large, sticky pods were here. Billy glanced up from the five green cocoons and noticed his clock. Oh no! It still reads 11:30. Those new guys must have tricked me into feeding them after midnight by unplugging it. After Billy left for work, Gizmo watched the pods in horror. Hours passed, 
And then they quivered and cracked open. Downstairs, Lynn was alone, baking in the kitchen, when suddenly a dinner plate flew past her head. She spun around to see nasty, scaly creatures threatening her from the countertops. Those things must have hatched out of the cocoons upstairs. No longer were they cute furry mogwai. Now, they were gremlins. Bravely, Lynn battled the beasts with kitchen utensils. She even doused one with bug spray and trapped him in the microwave. Shaken, Lynn stumbled into the living room to catch her breath. Suddenly, the Christmas tree toppled onto her. A gremlin leaped savagely onto her back, screeching and scratching. Just then, Billy returned home. Quickly, he grabbed an ornamental sword and struck down the fierce beast. He looked up to see the one remaining gremlin snarl at him and then escape out a window into the cold night. Mom, it's that troublemaker Stripe. Billy took his mother to a neighbor's house. You'll be safe here, Mom. I'm going after that rotten little gremlin. He loaded Gizmo into his nylon backpack and set out into the bitter night. Together, they followed Stripe's tracks across the snow to the local gymnasium. Look, Giz, he's broken in through that side window. We've got to go in there and destroy him. Billy stalked nervously across the silent gym. Suddenly, Stripe leaped at him, <laughs> raking his chest with razor-sharp claws. The gremlin then turned deliberately and dove into the nearby swimming pool. Billy cringed as the pool began bubbling fiercely. Yes, the water's reacting with Stripe's skin. He's reproducing. We've got to get help. As Billy stumbled outside, he heard Stripe's taunting laugh. Now, multiplied by the hundreds... Soon, gremlins were running wild through Kingston Falls. They gleefully smashed windows, knocked over garbage cans, pulled down holiday decorations, and swung merrily from TV antennas. Several strutted around proudly in stolen hats and coats. One crafty gremlin even pried open a traffic control box. He switched all the traffic lights green and watched the cars pile up. The gremlins didn't like people, and they didn't like the town. In fact, the only thing they did like was making trouble. City worker Futterman was home watching TV when he heard his snowplow start up outside. Sheila, look. My plow's driving all by itself. Wait, it's headed this way. The plow crashed right through the Futterman's living room. Thanks to you-know-who. Dozens of mischievous gremlins invaded Dory's pub, chasing out all the customers but one, Billy's girlfriend, Kate. They screeched at her to fetch them food and drink. She ducked a handful of peanuts. Ow! Hold on! I'm working as fast as I can. Kate toiled on fearfully as the gremlins threw bottles, ripped up the pool table, and put on discarded hats and scarves. One adventuresome beast even rode the overhead fan for fun. But when one boisterous gremlin demanded a light for his cigar, Kate noticed the match made him flinch. The light hurts his eyes. That gives me an idea. She aimed a flash camera at the creatures. Smile, turkeys. The creatures howled and backed away from Kate. As she headed for the front door, she clicked the camera again. Oh, no. I've used up all the flashes. The angry gremlin surrounded her with vengeance in their eyes. Suddenly, the glare of headlights flooded into the room. The gremlins fell back in pain. Kate, it's me, Billy. Run outside. Kate dashed out. Billy, where are those creatures? Billy hurried her quickly down the street. They're gremlins, and they're tearing up the whole town. Let's hide in here. They ducked into a building. Kate hugged him tightly. It was horrible, Billy. 
Thanks for saving me. Dawn approached. Kate, Billy, and Gizmo crept cautiously outside and explored the ruined town. There's no sign of them anywhere, Billy. Then Gizmo sniffed the wind. Excitedly, he pointed Billy toward the local movie theater. Of course. The gremlins are hiding indoors. Sunlight can kill them. Nervously, Billy peeked inside. They're all in here, Kate. Singing and yelling and throwing popcorn. <laughs> Billy turned to Kate. You used to work here. Show me where the boiler room is. I've got a plan. Kate led him to a back room behind the screen. Billy turned on all the gas jets and lit a rag fuse. Now let's get out of here fast. They raced across the street just as a huge fireball erupted from the theater. We did it! All the gremlins are gone! Gizmo tugged on Billy's jacket, pointing towards a department store window. Billy groaned. It's Stripe. How did he get away? Come on, we've got to finish him off. He's the last gremlin. As the three entered the silent store, Billy picked up a baseball bat. You and Gizmo find the lights, Kate. Billy crept from aisle to aisle. He searched the dark tensely. Nothing. Suddenly, a saw blade ripped past Billy's head. <laughs> Narrowly ducking, Billy chased the wicked gremlin across the store. Racing around a corner, Billy suddenly toppled over in pain, clutching his shoulder. Stripe had shot him with an arrow. The gremlin loaded his crossbow again and cackled. Then the store lights blazed on. Howling, Stripe dropped his weapon and covered his eyes. Billy was saved. Kate found the switches. Then Stripe's ears perked up. He dashed madly for the garden department. Billy followed and discovered Stripe's goal, an electric water fountain. Oh, no. He's going to multiply again. The gremlin <laughs> laughed gleefully and leaped into the spray. Just then, Gizmo zoomed by in a toy car. He crashed into a window, grabbing at the curtain cord with all his tiny might. The curtain flew open, and sunlight poured in. Stripe screamed. His armored skin cracked, and he dissolved into nothingness. That night, Gizmo's original owner, the ancient Chinese man, entered the Pelser's home. Glaring at the family, he placed the tiny creature back in its wooden box. Why must man always misuse nature's gifts? He is not ready to own Mogwai. Gizmo poked his head out of the wooden box, searching the room with teary eyes. Billy smiled sadly. The old Chinaman's face softened. He patted Billy's shoulder. Mogwai likes you. Sell them wrong. Someday you may be ready.